Hi, I'm Sadie Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Akata Losana. I'm from Butua and I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening Fiji, in this bulletin conflicting views on interest rates, social media associated with child trafficking, and bogus agents again in the spotlight. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. The NZ Bank country head says high-level liquidity in the market doesn't mean that they will lower interest rates. However, the Minister for Economy had stressed that high liquidity levels should allow banks to reduce interest rates to help those businesses and individuals struggling during COVID-19. Koroi Tandulala reports. The Economy Minister says government is doing its best to help Fijians during these hard times. I mentioned to you earlier on, uh, the, um, by bringing in uh, foreign debt, we actually add into the money supply and, of course, the increasing liquidity within the system. And that should be able to you know, bring down interest rates uh, in, the, in the short to medium term. The Blue Bank, on the other hand, says there are certain factors that they need to consider that will influence interest rates. Having a lot of low liquidity does not really mean that you have a, a lower interest rates. Uh, Interest rates is not only the cash uh, driven, it is also uh, driven in terms of the quality of the portfolio, in terms of the risk which you take, in terms of the overall capital adjustments which you have to do. Right? Ministry of Economy Head of Fiscal Policy Shiri Gander says high liquidity level in the market should be reflected in the interest rates offered by banks. One of the key aspects behind government increasing foreign borrowings has been with a mindset to be able to bring down interest rates in Fiji which will play a crucial role once things normalizes, once the credit risk for businesses come down, to be able to rebound, businesses being able to take loans and uh, <clears throat> for uh, more investments to take place. So as of right now, if you have to ask me that billion dollar means that yes, interest rate will go down, I can't say that yes, it will go down or it will go up. We will continue to evaluate and based on our situation, we will come back. The country's liquidity level currently stands at 956.4 million as of this day. Dulala, FBC News. The Department of Social Welfare is concerned with the use of social media to facilitate domestic child trafficking. The Social Welfare Director says they've had several cases of domestic child trafficking and in some instances they've removed the child from their homes to protect them. The Social Welfare Department says this is becoming a worrying trend and they're working closely with police and other stakeholders to curb this issue. With the current situation with social media, uh, they, have been, they have been lured by adults and we have, come, we have several cases like that that have been reported to us. Sometimes it happens without the parents is known. And so when it's reported to us, we contact the parents, we contact the police and so the casework starts. But yes, it's happening and it, it's domestic. Director Rupeni Fatiaki says they've taken some extreme steps in certain cases for the safety and well-being of the victims. Like trafficking, you know, we come in, we do our own assessment, and if we need to remove the children, even if the parents, if the parents, the, the danger is within the home, and the, the perpetrator is within the home, and the home environment is not safe, then we'll, if we have to remove the children, we'll have to remove the children. And we do that. The law allows us to do that. Save the Children Fiji says they're working with relevant bodies to spread more awareness on the issue. For us, for Save the Children Fiji, this is actually quite concerning. We are working with the, the social welfare department and also, you know, at the community level. Uh, we have uh, now moved towards establishing reporting mechanisms. Um, and, you know, educating communities. The latest report of child trafficking and the youngest victim is an 11-year-old. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. The Consumer Council of Fiji continues to receive reports against individuals trying to dupe Fijians by claiming to be licensed real estate agents and authorized property caretakers. The council's chief executive says in some cases, university students have become victims of these bogus agents. 
Kritika Kumar reports. The Consumer Council says they have received reports of bogus agents taking security deposits or bond for properties they do not own. We also have cases where people are posing like caretakers, they are showing properties and taking deposits whereas actually that property has already been leased out to some other um, um, you know, people. Seema Shandil says fraudulent agents are preying on people's vulnerabilities as opportunities to earn money during these difficult times. We have been uh, receiving complaints and we have uh, been working with RealB to see how we can you know, resolve these issues in the market. The RealB chair says pigeons should be vigilant as legitimate agents will have an identity card issued by the board. As far as uh, the RealB is concerned, we want to ensure that all the agents, they have the licensed uh, uh, salesperson to, to operate under, under that particular agent. The council is urging pigeons to verify the credibility of agents they deal with and demand a valid license issued by RealB before they make an arrangements or transactions. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Ministry of Fisheries is considering to temporarily lift the ban on beach demur in light of the financial hardship faced by many families due to COVID-19. Fisheries Minister Semi Kuroi Lavisao says they have been conducting consultation for the past two months and it is yet to be completed. However, the ban on the commodity is still in place and Fijians need to follow it. The ministry says this is a complicated issue as it involves a lot of stakeholders within the fishing industry. We anticipate to take a bit of time because every stakeholder in Fiji has to be consulted before a decision is made, after a cabinet paper is presented to cabinet, uh, after being vetted by the Solicitor General, and then cabinet will then make a decision on the proposal that will be made by the Ministry of Fisheries. The minister says if the ban is to be lifted, certain measures will remain in place to ensure it is not overexploited. As you know, uh, not only in Fiji, but in the Pacific and worldwide, uh, beach dimmer is a uh, commodity that has experienced boom and bust, which I mean, which means basically that uh, when there is a lot of resources in the water, the tendency for it to be harvested without any proper control will uh, result in a bust or in the in the business in beach dimmer. Koroila Vesau says the overexploitation of beach dimmer saw the implementation of the ban in 2017 to allow the species to thrive again. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, more road rehabilitation expected around the country and PAFCO maintains job. My name is Shubu, I live in Tava Town. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. My name is Karthi Kapdeshtan. I live in Mirchi FM. It's hot. Namaskar, I'm Alim. I always listen to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. The Fiji Roads Authority says rehabilitation work around the country can be expected from now until November. Their FRA chief executive says a lot of focus was placed in the rehabilitation of the Suva area in the past few months and work will now be extended to other parts of the country. Apenisa Wangarandovu has more. With an increased budget allocation for this new financial year, FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says Nandi and Lambasa will see an increase in road work under the rehabilitation program. We're particularly pleased in the budget to see the recognition of rehabilitation over repair. Um, there's a 30 million allowance there for rehabilitation for just the type of work we've been doing for the last few months in Suva. That will go very well across the country and we will be able to do some major works through Nandi and through Lambasa as well as Suva. More adds, the new pothole reduction program will see rehabilitation work carried out in cities and town centres. There are certain areas of the city where potholes cluster in groups and you can't repair them anymore. And they're in small areas and they don't warrant full rehab of an entire road. So what we're looking to do now is pick certain areas and we'll rehabilitate 
a small section of the road to save pothole repairs in the future. Some of those roads will be around Nambua, others will be around Prince's Road. In fact, all over the city uh, of Suva and out into uh, other areas, Lambasa, Latoka uh, and Nasuri as well. We're working on areas there. The FRA was allocated $348.9 million in the 2020-2021 budget, an increase of $72.4 million from the last financial year, with $70 million allocated for road rehabilitation. Apinisawang Gerdobu, FBC News. The Pacific Fishing Company in Levuka is providing people on the island with jobs and a way to support their livelihoods during the current economic crisis. This was highlighted by Minister for Local Government Pramila Kumar while on a tour of the factory during her trip to Levuka. Kumar says it is encouraging to witness more tuna being brought to the factory, enabling more production and sustaining jobs. Meanwhile, she also highlighted the need for more effort in restoring some of the buildings within the heritage site since the aftermath of Cyclone Winston. But how can we facilitate that? Because if we don't facilitate that and we're going to say, okay, it's heritage, we need to maintain our past, I believe in that. We should, we must. But from the local point of view, they would be questioning, we move around and what we see is dilapidated buildings. It's not giving them the positive vibes. And we need to change that. Fiji signed a landmark agreement with the United States yesterday, which will see enhanced bilateral en engagements between the two countries in areas of defense and security. The International Military Education Training Agreement will allow Fiji to send officers and senior personnel to professional military education and leadership development courses in the United States. Signing the agreement with the U.S. Ambassador, Permanent Secretary of the Office of the Prime Minister, Yogesh Karan, says the agreement will ultimately deepen the existing partnership between Fiji and the United States. U.S. Ambassador to Fiji, Joseph Seller, says the signing signifies the common aspirations and commitment that the United States and Fiji share on defense and security. The long-standing agreement on IMET between the two countries was established in 1986. In our successful Fijian segment tonight, we feature our very own Professor Eddie McCaig, who was bestowed the honor of the father of the Pacific Island surgery. Coming from a family of seamen, Eddie McCaig wanted to follow suit and become a sea captain. However, destiny led him to the medical field, where his passion and commitment earned him the highest of honors in Fiji and overseas. After 45 years of practicing and teaching medicine and surgery in Fiji and New Zealand, Professor McCaig is now retired and shares some of the highlights of his career. Lena Reese with the details. Growing up in Savo Savo and then moving to Green Street in Suva, Professor McCaig says he did not think he would ever become a surgeon until it came down to making a choice of what to pursue at university. None of my immediate family ever went to university or anything, so it was, I went to uh, Suva Grammar School. But I always wanted to be a captain on the ship. My father's a sea captain, with the small cutters around, around, uh, around Fiji. And then I was given a scholarship to do... Uh, um, to become a captain. I went for a medical examination and I failed because of my eyesight. Uh, the option was to do veterinary science and or, uh, or go to do medicine. Yes. And my, my father said, oh, I want someone to be, at least go to university. So I went and did medicine at the Fiji School of Medicine. Yeah. Professor McKay lost his father in 1973, but went on to graduate from FSM in 1975 Having a career in medicine, surgery and orthopedics in the last 45 years, he maintains that his patients are the highlight of his career. And the highlight is uh, certainly patients. Eh? And the patients will say, you remember me? You operated on me 30 years ago. And I say, no, I don't remember you. But, or I nod and say, yeah, I remember you very well. So the highlight is patient satisfaction. There's a famous surgeon who worked in India said, uh, we work in India not for the money, for the friends we make who are, who are patients. Eh? So uh, the thing is, the highlights is uh, patience, patience all the way. And the big thing is academia and with its students. So uh, to see uh, a lot of our people succeed is, is huge. He advises aspiring surgeons that medicine is a great profession with unlimited possibilities. And give it all. 
You know, that's that's the big thing. Give it all. There's no halfway. There's no such thing as, oh, I want to be a little bit of a sea captain or a little bit of a doctor. If you want to be a doctor, go all the way. Okay? Medicine uh, really is, uh, you know, the world's your oyster. Okay? And uh, you can do whatever you want. And our people are smart enough to do whatever they want. With a career that has given him many opportunities to live and work abroad, Professor McCaig says he has no regrets, adding that he had done all he wanted to in his professional life, achieved his goals before making the decision to retire. Lena Reese, FBC News. Turning overseas, the United Nations is warning of a developing humanitarian crisis in Lebanon with food and medical supply lines across the country badly disrupted by the deadly explosion in Beirut. Within the capital, residents are staging their own cleanup operations, saying there's no government help. Coming up in sports, top four teams confirm for BOG semis. And defending champion misses out on semi-final spot. This and more after the break. one. <laughs> Oval Suva and Priceline Pharmacy Bar have joined all-in-one builders Nandi and Delta One Automotive Repairs Rewa in the Punjas Battle of the Giants semi-finals. Nandi was the first team to secure a semi-final spot after three wins in the pool stages. Rewa Bar and Suva all had to fight for a spot after producing mixed results in the first and second day of the competition. Coaches of the three teams echoed similar sentiments with players performing according to game plan. The focus was to push the game to another level, a level that uh, will not allow Nava to be uh, competitive in today's game. So I think uh, the boys did a great job. Last night we talked to the boys about today's game. You know, we said whatever level is going to come in, you know, we're going to play football today and win the crowd. We came here to uh, get three points out of this game, but then. Uh, Looking at the game situation and all, we are happy to qualify for the semi finals. Defending Punjab's Battle of the Giants champion Sharma's Investment USA Lombasa has missed out on the semi final stages. This is after the side drew one all with giant killers Gofri and Asinu in their last pool match today. Tale Matairukula has more. The defending champion knew what was at stake after their one all draw with Suba and Ba. Getting the win was crucial for the Mbamba Singh Alliance, but things did not go their way with Nesinu holding them to yet another one-all draw. Nobody else to blame. I think so. we have ourselves to blame. Had a lot of opportunities to score. We were too casual. I've been telling the boys from yesterday that it will be a very tough game. And after going one, one up, I think so. we took the game very lightly. And the result is there. Uh, Nesinu defended well. Congratulations to Nesinu. Disappointed with the results, Coach Ronnie Lal says they will turn their focus to the upcoming National League. After playing so well yesterday, I think so a lot of fans will be disappointed. Apologize to them. But that's part of football. Football happens is on the day. What happens is all different. Uh, have to take a hard approach now. So going back now, going back to the drawing board. Areas to work on is our midfield and our fitness. Even though the giant killers also fell short of the semi-final spot, coach Tangi Vonolangi was proud of the performance of his players. They play with a lot of pride, unlike other districts, but uh, they, we were down in the first game, but we came out fighting like wounded uh, tiger on the first uh, uh, yesterday's game. And again today they gave in all their own because uh, all, the, all their all. Lambasa finished fourth in Group A with three points, while Lesinu set in third place with four points. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports.
The Namorsi rugby side has successfully defended the Fairbrother Sullivan Trophy. This is after they defeated Naita Siri 17-15 in an entertaining encounter in Thompson Park yesterday. Tale Matarakula again with the details. The match has been described as a scintillating, blistering performance as both teams pushed for the win. The Fairbrother title holders stood their ground in the entirety of the match against the powerful Neta Siri side. Impressed with the performance, Tuinamosi Ratu Suliano Matenitombua says the sacrifices of the players has paid off. A lot of sacrifices from the boys. And uh, when I spoke to them yesterday, it's a family I talked about. They have to remember the family. Close yet so far away, so but we almost, we almost did it. Right? But the full credit to Namosi. They show they are very hard to beat at their grounds. Although we came with the, with the attitude to win, but yeah, we fell short. The Naita Series side put on a good show yesterday as they fought to the last whistle, finishing two points behind the trophy holders to finish second. The Highlanders made an early start in the second spell with a successful penalty and a converted try. Naita Siri captain Sireli Kalodhava reassured Highlanders fans that they will come back strong in the next round. Although the result did not go our way, we are thankful to all our fans for the tremendous support they've shown. We just want to reassure our fans that this loss will motivate us to do better in the next round. In next week's round of competition, Namosi will take on Yasawa and Naita Siri meets Nandronga on Saturday. Tale Materkula, FBC Sports. Fiji Mbathi and Panthers forward Viliame Kikau scored the first try for the Penrith Panthers as they beat the Raiders 28-12 in their NRL clash last night. Kikau scored in the 10th minute to give Panthers an early 6-0 lead after Nathan Cleary's successful conversion. The Hurricanes still have a chance of claiming their inaugural Super Rugby Aotearoa title after defeating the Chiefs 31-18 last night. They are now just one point behind the Blues and three behind table leader Crusaders. In Super Rugby Australia, the Waratahs thrash the Reds 45-12. And in weather, we experience cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Mainly fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Quick look at the weather map looking at the west, mainly fine weather. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with a few showers and cool at night. And up north, not very different from other centres with some brief showers in the afternoon. At sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, low tide was at 4.26 p.m. with high tide expected at 10.52 tonight. Sunrise is at 6.22. Now for tomorrow, expect cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, mainly fine elsewhere. Our further outlook, we're looking on to Tuesday. Expect cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands, mainly fine elsewhere, cool at night. And recapping the main stories for tonight, businesses raise concerns on interest rates, domestic child trafficking a major concern and Fijians warned against bogus agents. Now for these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should public transport have separate lanes during peak hour traffic? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, by Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or hashtag FBC News. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable new week ahead. Bye for now. I'm Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2. I'm Radio Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2.